Shadowheart is one of Baldur's Gate 3's main characters. A Sharan cleric of human and high elf parentage, Shadowheart carries the burden of a mysterious and mostly unremembered past along with a divine task, all of which will play a pivotal role in the unfolding events of the Forgotten Realms. Given the nature of this video, there will be all the spoilers, and as usual, useful timestamps can be found in the video description. Shadowheart's journey begins, of all things, as a captive of the Mind Flayers, malevolent and thonic aberrations with octopus-like heads. Not much is known of their origin, but their self-ordained purpose is clear. Answering to a hive mind known as an Elder Brain, they seek to spread its influence across the Forgotten Realms, harnessing potent psionic powers to dominate and enthrall all sentient life. Such lofty pursuits require an ever-growing number of Mind Flayers. Their birth, if one can call it that, occurs through a process known as Seramorphosis. It begins with a Mind Flayer tadpole, which burrows its way into the brain of a cowed humanoid host. Once inside, the tadpole begins consuming the gray matter of its unfortunate vessel. Over the course of hours and days, the mind and soul of the host are purged from the body, leaving nothing but a husk for the tadpole to puppet around. Beneath the skin, organs, muscles, and bones are transformed to those of a fully realized Mind Flayer. Finally, shedding its human rind, the Mind Flayer emerges, ready to carry out the Elder Brain's will. Shadowheart was able to complete the first step of her mission, the retrieval of an ancient and alien artifact. However, her possession of it somehow drew the Mind Flayers to her. They abducted and imprisoned her aboard their Nautiloid, a semi-organic ship with plane-shifting capabilities. Trapped in their clutches, Shadowheart was helpless to resist the Mind Flayer tadpole as it burrowed into her brain. The Mind Flayers were not satisfied with their current catch though, and descended upon Yartar, a prosperous city in the continent Faerun. Under the Mind Flayers' control, the Nautiloid's enormous tentacles snaked through the city streets, instantly transporting all they touched to imprisoning pods within the Cephalopod ship. This hunt for more thralls was cut short when a portal to another plane opened in the sky, and several red dragons emerged. These dragons were not alone or without direction, as each was under the command of a Githyanki knight. The Githyanki are a race of reptile-like humanoids. Descendants of the Mind Flayer's ancient foes, the Gith, Githyanki have inherited natural defenses against the psionic powers wielded by Mind Flayers. A noteworthy fact of Githyanki is that they are native to the Astral Plane, and although the Mind Flayers are their sworn enemy, it's unlike the Githyanki to travel to the Material Plane for nothing more than a grudge attack against a single Nautiloid. Initially, the Mind Flayer captain attempted to repel the Gith Yankee attackers. However, it quickly became clear that the Nautiloid was no match for the Dragon Riders, and the Mind Flayer switched tactics. Using the transponder, the Nautiloid fled to another plane of existence. But the Gith Yankee are also capable of such travel and gave chase. The Nautiloid sustained heavy damage during the pursuit. As a result, many of its prisoner pods malfunctioned or otherwise broke open, just as the Nautiloid plane shifted into Avernus, the uppermost circle of the Nine Hells. Shadowheart awoke to find that she was, rather surprisingly, both physically and mentally intact. Yet, she was still trapped within one of the Mind Flayer pods, also intact. Fortunately, she was not alone. An adventurer, along with a Githyanki fighter by the name of Lazel, each with a similar tadpole resident, were located in a section of the Nautiloid that sustained greater damage. After escaping their compromised pods, the two formed an unlikely alliance over their shared freedom of thought. You are no thrall. Vlakith blesses me this day. Together, we might survive and battled through several imps of Avernus towards the Nautiloid's helm. This brought the duo within earshot of Shadowheart, and she called out to them for aid. Where Lazel saw a straggler and a waste of precious time, the adventurer saw another potential ally. 
While searching for a means to free Shadowheart, the adventurer witnessed her impending fate, were she left behind. When activated, the pod accelerated the process of seromorphosis within their inhabitant, producing a full-fledged Mind Flayer in a matter of seconds. Such was not Shadowheart's fate, as the adventurer found an eldritch rune with a telling shape. Inserting it into the nearby console, the adventurer was flooded with a newfound sense of connection and authority. It came from the tadpole in his head, and allowed him to command the biomechanical brain of the console to open the Mind Flayer pod, releasing Shadowheart. Opening pleasantries were interrupted by a sense of urgency along with an intruding connection of thoughts thanks to the tadpoles. One of Shadowheart's first thoughts to leak out was her mistrust of Lazel, due to her being Githyanki. In the end, pragmatism won out and she agreed to a temporary alliance with the others to escape the Nautiloid if nothing else. That being said, Shadowheart did give her best effort to secure the artifact discreetly and deflected any probing questions from her tenuous allies. It's nothing. Trust me. Enough of this chatter. We need to get to the helm. Now. She's right. Lead on. While Lazel and Shadowheart initially agreed on the need to make haste, it was made clear that their relationship would be anything but cordial only moments later. We are nearing the helm. Once inside, do as I say. Who put you in charge? I'll trust my own judgment. Despite the tension, the trio made it to the helm, stumbling upon a battle between Mind Flayers and fiendish Cambions. Free will be damned, the presence of their tadpoles had the Mind Flayer convinced that these were proper thralls, and it commanded them to activate the Nautiloid's transponder. Thrall, connect the nerves of the transponder. We must escape. Now. Acting out of self-preservation rather than psionic compulsion, the trio obeyed, avoiding the fiend with the flaming greatsword and dashing for the transponder. Shadowheart activated it moments before a red dragon doused it with fire. Despite the heat, the transponder managed to stay functioning, triggering a series of erratic jumps through the various planes of existence. Whether by luck or intention, the doomed nautiloid eventually materialized somewhere over the coastline of Faerun, creating quite the spectacle for those on the ground. In her final moments of consciousness, Shadowheart was flung from the ground-bound ship. Instead of colliding with the Earth, an act that would prove fatal, her motion was halted by an ethereal force of unknown origin an instant before impact. Hours later, after sunrise, Shadowheart stirred, helped along by a light shaking from an adventurer with a familiar face, the one that freed her from the Mind Flayer pod. You're alive. I'm alive. After coming to grips with the fact that she was still alive and deciding she would like to keep it that way, Shadowheart laid out her priorities to the adventurer and insisted upon working towards them together. First things first, we need supplies, shelter, and most of all, a healer. We might have escaped, but we still have these little monsters in our heads. Charging off by yourself sounds like a fine way to get killed. We need each other, and we both know what's at stake. Can't think of better company. Lead the way. In agreement, the adventurer and Shadowheart set off in search for a healer. Early on, they reunited with Lazel and teamed up with several others suffering from the same tadpole-related condition. Gale, a wizard from Waterdeep. Most excellent. A parasite shared is a parasite halved. Or something to that effect. Astarion, a rather pale elf. I was hoping for a kind soul. Well, not to worry. 
Will Blade of the Frontiers? Damnable Roach! And Karlak, a fiery tiefling barbarian with a bone to pick. Now that we're old pals, how would you feel about helping me kill some evil bastards? That night, the party set up camp, but it was a haggard affair, as all were suffering from the worsening symptoms of seramorphosis. As the adventurer slept, he was joined by a dream visitor. She claimed to be the one that saved him and the others from the Nautiloid crash, as well as the one that would protect and prevent them all from turning into mind flayers. You will not become a mind flayer. Not while I'm around. I'll protect you. Shadowheart, amongst other companions, had a similar experience that night, though she urged caution as what the dream visitor promised seemed too good to be true. This dream companion wanted me to use the tadpole, use its power. Whoever it was claimed to be an ally, but I don't know. Over the following week, the party investigated several leads on how they might rid themselves of their tadpoles. The results of such endeavors ranged from disappointment I don't have a cure. Only a way out. to downright catastrophic. I agree. It's a feisty critter. Just a little further. The party even received a proposition from Raphael, a powerful devil that promised he could cure their tadpoles for a price. Am I a friend? Potentially. An adversary? Conceivably. But a savior? That's for certain. But on this topic, both the adventurer and Shadowheart agreed that he was not to be bargained with. There were no right answers with that devil. He was toying with his food. Us. Despite this, every party member's spirits climbed steadily, as with each long rest, it became more apparent that the dream visitor had been telling the truth. For the time being, they were protected and would not become mind flayers. Over time, the bond between Shadowheart and the adventurer grew, but Shadowheart remained tight-lipped on her peculiarities, one being a strong fear of wolves. They're ravenous predators with fangs like daggers. It's hardly an irrational fear to harbor. You've been decent to me so far. Maybe if you can, don't make me face any more of them. At least, not alone. The other was a mysterious wound on her right hand, which would flare with pain on occasion. She insisted that it had nothing to do with the tadpole, but would say little more on the subject. It's just an old wound that hurts me from time to time. Nothing to be concerned about. It's nothing to do with the tadpoles, at least, in case your imagination is in danger of getting away from you. When the party stumbled upon a hidden shrine to Saluna, Shadowheart expressed her disdain towards the moon goddess, or in her words, moon witch. This rubbish is an offering to Saluna. At best, it's worthless. At worst, who knows, could be cursed. Do not trifle with that moon witch or her trinkets. Only trouble will follow. Such a strong reaction piqued the adventurer's curiosity, and he uncovered one of Shadowheart's many secrets. I should have stayed quiet. You want the truth? Fine. I worship Shah, mistress of the night, Saluna's twin and foe. Now that you have the truth, please don't make a big fuss about it. This secrecy is to be expected from a worshipper of Shah, as Shadowheart explains the importance of it and feels justified in her actions. Secrecy is everything for Shah's children. It is our code, our creed, our shield. I even keep secrets from myself. I had my memories suppressed, so that nothing I know could be used against the Dark Lady. Once I prove myself, my memories will be restored. I'm not sorry I kept this from you. Not one bit. Though, perhaps that might change, if you can show an open mind. Slowly but surely, Shadowheart opened up about Lady Shar and the core tenets of her faithful. My Lady Shar is the Night Singer, the patron of darkness and loss. Most fear the dark, like children, because in darkness they see their fears reflected. But Shah teaches us to step beyond fear, beyond loss, 
In darkness, we do not hide. We act. Pain, hope, the promise of better days. All of these are heavy cloaks that bend our backs and burden our hearts. We shed those cloaks. As well as some of its less savory aspects. We tear down the lies the world is drunk on. The institutions they trust, the so-called gods they worship, the lives they cling to. We destroy false idols, topple corrupt organizations, fight heretics wherever they're found. There's often suffering, death even. Many people break before they embrace Shah's truths. With these revelations, Shadowheart was finally able to give an explanation of her mysterious wound. Although she does not understand its purpose, she has faith that it is a divine burden from Shar. Sometimes I wonder if it's supposed to be guiding me, punishing me, testing me. But perhaps it's none of those. Perhaps it's completely random. I'd like to hope there's more to it than that. Some meaning that Lady Shah will reveal to me when the time is right. Until then, all I can do is endure. Eventually, Shadowheart utilized the tadpole to share her earliest memory with the adventurer, how she found her way to Lady Shah's embrace. There's something I've been wanting to share with you, if now's a good time. It's difficult to put into words. I think it might be easier to just show you. Use the tadpole, the connection. I don't remember how it started, only how it ended. I was fleeing. In the memory, a young Shadowheart sits alone in the woods at night. Out of the darkness crept a large wolf, fangs bared in a snarl, explaining the source of Shadowheart's fear. Before she could meet a grisly fate, no less than five followers of Shar came to Shadowheart's rescue. They struck down the wolf and led her away. She asked my name. I can't remember what I said. I can't remember anything before those woods. All I know is she saved my life and gave me a new home with Lady Shah. Finally, Shadowheart told the adventurer everything she could remember about her mission, which would be completed once the artifact was delivered to the Sharan Enclave in the city of Baldur's Gate, and how such an act might aid her in fulfilling the lifelong dream of becoming a Dark Justicier, one of Shar's elite. As long as I've prayed to Lady Shar, I've wished to serve her as a Dark Justicier. There is scarcely a greater way to fully dedicate yourself to Lady Shah, save perhaps if you become the head of her church. To become a Dark Justicia is to become the Night Singer's sword arm, her implement with which she will cast down the unbelievers and win the final battle to restore her perfect, endless darkness. It's all I ever wanted. I prayed it was my calling. But Mother, forbid me from seeking to prove myself worthy of the rank. She said I was not ready. Not my mother, Mother, I should add. The Mother Superior, head of Lady Shah's enclave in Baldur's Gate. Sometimes I wonder if she would ever deem me ready. Perhaps if I succeed in my mission and reach Baldur's Gate, Hope has little place amongst Lady Shah's children. It's an illusion, a distraction. But for this, I hope my time will yet come. Completing her mission proved easier said than done, 
as many dangerous individuals were on the hunt for the artifact, one of which was the legendary Githyanki Kithrak Voss. A vessel fell from the sky. We seek a precious weapon that was taken from it. Help us find it and I will leave your blood beneath your skin unspilled. Don't help them. Don't tell them a thing. We're dead if you do. Through a combination of mental fortitude and boldness of character, the adventurer was able to ward off further scrutiny from Voss, keeping the artifact concealed, at least for the time being. So bold in the face of death. Perhaps you may live after all. After that encounter, Lazel took a closer look at the artifact and noticed that it was of Githyanki design. This revelation brought tensions between her and Shadowheart to a head back at camp. You carry a Githyanki relic. I will have an explanation. Or your head. Walk away. Now. I won't warn you again. You have something precious to my kin. An heirloom. I will have it back. Heirloom? Plunder from some conquered realm, more like. This artifact is the only thing keeping us from becoming slaves to our parasites. Be glad I have it. I do not wish to spill blood here. Come daylight, we will find a place to end this. Fine. You can accept your wrong, or we'll be rid of you permanently. Either way, I win. Later that night, Shadowheart snuck up on a sleeping Lazelle, holding her at knife point. You had every chance to look the other way, but here we are. You chose this. Spare me the justifications, coward! If anyone asks, I'll say you were transforming. Don't expect to be mourned. The situation had the potential to turn deadly. Fortunately, cooler heads prevailed, and what might have ended in murder, instead led to a mutual understanding. Loosen the grip on your pride for one blasted moment, won't you? We needn't be enemies. There's plenty of those to go around already. What would you have? That we be friends? Let's not get ahead of ourselves. But imagine what we might achieve if we channeled some of that hostility back at our real foes, instead of each other. They wouldn't stand a chance. I don't think there'll be any more trouble between Lazelle and I, if you were wondering. We can all sleep easier now. Well, apart from all the rest. The next day, Shadowheart's beliefs about the artifact proved to be well-founded. As the party approached a goblin camp in search of a powerful druid named Helsen, suddenly and without warning, they were brought to their knees by an irresistible voice, which carried an overwhelming sense of authority. Hear my voice. Obey my command. The voice demanded that the party bring the artifact to the voice's chosen three. It was only the very same artifact that shielded them all from being enthralled on the spot. It wasn't long before the dream visitor returned, with further explanation on the tadpoles and guidance on where the party should turn next. These parasites are more than a lithid spawn. They are vessels for control. The infected hear the voice of the Absolute and believe it to be a god. That is how the cult of the Absolute is spreading. The highest of their rank, the True Souls, carry a tadpole just like yours. It is how they receive their orders. It is what makes them obey. Follow the cultist's trail. They will lead you to their masters. Use the powers your parasite gives you to convince them you are one of them. And when you find the source of their magic, destroy it. And so, under the guise of being so-called true souls, the party infiltrated the goblin camp, F -f Forgive me! I had no idea! decimated their leadership, and freed Halson. I owe thanks. I am the druid Halson. 
With the goblin threat eliminated, the party was afforded a night of reprieve, joined at camp by Halson and the tiefling refugees they saved. Curiously, Shadowheart found herself actually caring for the refugees, despite them being a distraction from Shar and her mission. Everyone seems to be in high spirits. Strange. You know who I never thought I'd find myself caring for? Exactly right. Never gave them much thought. Certainly not that bunch in the grove. Yet we came through for them. We saved their lives. Odd. I was taught to reject anything that distracted from Shah. But there'll be time for penance later. She also took the opportunity to spend some personal time with the adventurer she had grown to like. To us. In the morning, Halson gave the party a new road to follow, one that would lead to Moonrise Towers in the Shadow Cursed Lands. You have to get to Moonrise, but you still have a choice of how to get there. You could go overland, along the Risen Road or through the mountains. Easier at first, but you'll run into the Shadow Curse eventually. You could also go under. There is a tunnel somewhere in the ruined Temple of Saluna. It leads to Moonrise Towers through the Underdark. Long ago, a man called Ketherick Thorm built a secret stronghold deep down there, before rallying a whole army of Dark Justicias, Shah worshippers. Reaching the towers by way of the Underdark held particular interest to Shadowheart. Due to the promise of discovering more about Dark Justiciers, the man that once led them, Ketherick Thorm, and a relic known only as the Night Song. Dark Justicius. I must see for myself. Aridan and his lot were looking for a way down there. They were promised riches if they retrieved a relic called the Night Song. The party found the hidden entrance to the Underdark beneath the Saluna Temple ruins that had, until recently, been inhabited by goblins. They encountered many strange and often dangerous creatures in the Underdark. Following signs of the Absolute's influence, the party eventually reached the Grimforge, where a group of Duergars set up camp amongst the long since decayed remains of Dark Justiciers. The Duergar were recruited by a true soul, a drow named Nier. Following orders from a general at Moonrise Towers, they were to excavate the Grimforge ruins and uncover a path to a Sharan temple through the Underdark. A cave -in temporarily halted True Soul Nier's plans, and the adventuring party shut them down in a more permanent fashion, freeing a group of Iron Hand gnome slaves in the process. While the cultists failed to find a direct path to the subterranean temple, they were able to reach a ledge that overlooked it. Shadowheart was quick to pick up on the telltale motifs of Sharan architecture and shared her suspicions with the adventurer. That structure we saw from a distance in the Grimforge, something about it struck me as noteworthy. It might all be a coincidence, but between those ruins and the signs I saw of Dark Justicias before, it might be much more. Suspicions aside, it seemed the only way to reach the Sharan Temple and Moonrise Towers would be through the Shadow Cursed Lands. I don't know what I expected, but damn, this place is cursed! Those shadows. There's power coursing through them. Oddly familiar. Better stay on alert. Not only did Shadowheart find the Shadow Curse familiar, it seemed she was granted protection from it, which she interpreted as a sign from her god. The Shadow Curse. It doesn't seem to affect me like it does others. Not as badly, at least. Do you know what this means? I must be blessed. Lady Shah is protecting me where others are left to face her wrath. She loves me. Lady Shah wouldn't bless me like this for no reason. There must be something she wants of me. This isn't the first sign we've come across of a Sharan presence. I'm not sure I can keep ignoring them. I need to watch for any place dedicated to Lady Shah, a temple perhaps. I need to know if there's more to this. 
the party found shelter from the Shadow Curse at Last Light Inn. There, they met a group of Harpers, led by Jahira, a half-elven druid. The Harpers' goal was to lift the Shadow Curse from the lands. The largest obstacle was General Catherick Thorm, the previous leader of Dark Justiciers in days past. Although he had previously been slain, he returned to life and now had the added benefit of immortality. The party's status as pseudo-true souls made them the perfect candidates for Jahira's mission. Protected by your artifact, you can infiltrate his forces at Moonrise Towers posing as a true soul. Find out what it is that makes him invincible so we can strip him of his advantage. Once Catherick is without his shield, the sword, together we assault his tower and put a final end to this blight. To aid their efforts, the party sought a blessing from a cleric of Saluna, Isabel. She channeled the Moon Maiden's blessing to create a protective dome around Last Light Inn, which warded off the Shadow Curse. She was able to extend a lesser form of this divine protection to the party, much to the chagrin of Shadowheart. Salunite magic. Dark lady, forgive me. Despite the antithetical source of each cleric's power, Shadowheart and Isabel joined forces against their common enemy, the Absolute. Take the girl to Ketherick alive. <sighs> Pathetic. Moon Maiden, guide my hand. After gaining a stronger protection against the Shadow Curse, thanks to a pixie. Finally! Been trapped in that coffin with no one but a mad rider and my own farts for company. The party made their way to Moonrise Towers, where they bore witness to Catherick Thorm's invincibility. Sorry, my lord, she's an unbeliever outside my control. Try again. Shadowheart perceived Catherick's actions as an effrontery to Lady Shar. He's trouble. Worse, he's a traitor. Whatever loyalty he had towards Lady Shar is long gone. It would please her greatly to see him meet his long overdue end, I'll wager. It didn't take long for the party to gain a new lead at Moonrise Towers from Zrel, one of the Absolute's disciples. There is a relic that General Thorm requires. He sent his most trusted advisor, Disciple Balthazar, to retrieve it. The relic is beneath the Thorm family mausoleum. That is where you will find Balthazar. But we have lost contact with him. Go there, aid Balthazar if you can, and bring the relic home. Following this lead, the party journeyed to the Grand Mausoleum, where they were greeted by an all-too-familiar devil. Raphael warned of another devil that dwelled beneath the mausoleum, urging the party to kill it on sight. In truth, it is carnage incarnate. So if you meet the devil of which I speak, kill it. Consider no other course of action. On the surface, the Thorm mausoleum was just that, a burial site. However, Shadowheart discovered a hidden mechanism which opened the way down to one of Shar's greatest temples. It was only after passing Lady Shar's test for entry that Shadowheart realized the temple's true purpose. The gauntlet of Shar. I can't believe it. I can't believe we found the Dark Lady's sacred crucible. But I saw it with my own eyes. 
felt the polished stone walls raised in Lady Shah's honor. Normally, it would not be for me to pursue becoming a Dark Justicia without a superior's command, but this is different. My lady wanted me to find this place. I know it. Ambitions aside, there were also unwelcome guests to contend with. You do not belong here. No, you do not belong. This is the Dark Lady's house. She is no use for old, faithless bones. The first was a necromancer going by the name of Balthazar, chief advisor to Ketherick. A touch of the divine. Most curious for a true soul. Stowing her disgust and distrust for the moment. I trust this gas bag about as far as I can throw him, which isn't far. But perhaps better to play along for now. Shadowheart was able to learn that the relic in the temple's inner sanctum was the source of Catherick's invulnerability. The relic lends the general his strength, his invulnerability. It must be recovered before his enemies attempt to exploit it. While searching for the umbral gems that would grant access to the inner sanctum, the party stumbled into an ambush, one set by Raphael's aforementioned enemy. All was not as it seemed with the devil your gear, as indeed it was an infernal contract made with Raphael that has since confined your gear to these halls, forced to kill all dark justiciers along with anyone else that heard his contract. Spill or the blood swarm to the night, silence or prayers smother each right. Wonder Shah's halls, hungry to slay, leave no justice here. Alive to obey, leave none to hear it, then be set free. This song is your oath. Swear, swear it to me. Through intuition and trickery, Shadowheart was able to convince your gear that he could be free of his contract. First, by killing his Maragons, then his pet displacer beast and finally, himself. Nicely played, Raphael! Bastard! Whether or not such actions would actually fulfill the contract remained to be seen. Such was not the concern of the party as they retrieved the Umbral Gem nearby and ventured deeper into the Gauntlet of Shar. Within the Library of Silence, Shadowheart solved a puzzle relating to the Night Song and a sacrifice to be made. This revealed a hidden chamber where the Spear of Night waited, along with a set of Dark Justicier armor. To Shadowheart, it was a good omen. This is no ordinary spear. It may be important. Best keep it close. She donned the armor and took up the spear to complete the Gauntlet of Shar. This is one of Lady Shah's trials. Allow me. It's important. The Gauntlet of Shah is no ordinary temple. It is the highest test of the Dark Lady's faithful, to judge if they are worthy of becoming a Dark Justicia. The Gauntlet has double meaning. It speaks of the ordeals to be overcome and of the armor-clad fist of Lady Shah that would embrace the worthy. Survive the crushing gauntlet and be embraced by the Night Singer at its very core. The old ways were lost over time. Now some claim the rank simply by killing a single Saloon Knight. But before, they were a true elite. That's the last one. The Inner Sanctum is within reach now. One more test awaits. Descend to the Night Song. Make a sacrifice. Rise again. A dark justicia. Within the Inner Sanctum, the party found a pool of glowing water, a portal to Shar's domain. Standing before the pool, Shadowheart prayed for guidance from Shar. This must be the last step. I need to pray. 
Her prayer was answered, and with it, her purpose made clear. Only by Lady Shah's grace did we even make it this far. Take my spear, step forward, and strike down the Salunite. As you command, Nightsinger. All right. No need to dash in ahead of me. I'm ready. Stepping into the pool, the party found themselves consumed by darkness. Lady Shah, I can feel her all around. This is her domain. This is the Shadowfell. Shadowheart's moment of rapture was quickly intruded upon by Balthazar. He seized on the opportunity created by Shadowheart and her fellow companions, following them into the Shadowfell. There, he planned to transport the relic, Nightsong, to Moonrise Towers where it would continue serving as Catherick's source of immortality. But the Night Song was not just a relic, she was an Asimar, the immortal child of a god, in this case, Saluna. Aelin is mine, an Asimar bound to a soul cage of my creation, lending her immortal strength to General Thor. Both Shadowheart and the adventurer agreed, though perhaps for different reasons, that Balthazar could not be allowed to bring the Night Song to Moonrise Towers. The Night Song is Shah's sacrifice. She's my destiny. He cannot have her. So they fought and eventually defeated Balthazar within the Shadowfell. After the deed was done, Shadowheart's attention was turned towards the Night Song. Balthazar has drawn his final rancid breath. <laughs> A pity it was not my hand that brought it about. Instead, it was you. You, who have come to seek the praise of your wicked goddess. You, who have come to drive a dagger through my heart. Not a dagger. A spear. My Lady Shah's spear. Her fate is mine to seal. Let me handle this. Leading up to the moment, Shadowheart was certain on how events would play out. She would fulfill the prophecy of her god, silence the Night Song, and take her place as Shah's champion. child after all. And I am. I am. It is done. You have proven yourself. You have answered my highest calling. My chosen. My warrior. My dark justicia. No more hiding. Let me show you. Let all see how you have served me, Shadowheart and how you have been rewarded. Your pain is now your power. Wield it true. With the Night Song silenced, Saluna's protective barrier would fall, and all the heretics at last light in consumed by shadows. Shadowheart would kill the traitor, Catherick Thorm, in Lady Shar's name, return to her enclave in Baldur's Gate as a champion, and usurp the Mother Superior. I sunk a spear into the heart of the Moon Witch's daughter. Lady Shar rewarded me. She turned the pain that once held me back into the power that now drives me on. 
and she told me to cleanse her church of those who failed her. With a final sacrifice, her power under Shar would be solidified. My name is Shadowheart! It is done, and done well. They are with me now, in my endless dark, and from them, you can draw endless power. It's done. This place is mine now. Shah's forces are mine when I need them, and her power, it's right at my fingertips. I can't believe it. Shadowheart's certainty made her all the less prepared for what actually happened. Her fate is mine to seal. Let me handle this. Well, well, well. What's that I sense? A spear intended for my heart? Empowered by your goddess, I. Empowered to kill the child of a god. The fate you seal is your own. To be a dark justicia is to turn your heart from everything but loss. You will know no love, no joy, only servitude, until of course your mistress inevitably discards you. And there is much she does not tell you. A terrible blood price that may extend beyond my own death. Do you know what I am, little assassin? For I know you, a lost child. Frightened by wolves in the dark. What did you say? Much has been promised to you, hasn't it? But what has been taken from you? What do you know of your own heart? Your own life? I sense more in you than you know. Whatever you think you know of me won't matter once I become who I'm meant to be. I know you, a lost child, frightened by wolves in the dark. I... I can't believe I just did that. Lady Shah will disown me. What will happen to me? Not what will happen. What will you do? Your past is not yet lost. Your future is not yet fixed. Lay a hand on me in friendship, not quite Sharon. And I will fight the battle that has been waiting for me this last century. Then, oh then, we will have much to discuss. I am resplendent. You have given me a great gift, little warrior. Don't you find it oh so curious that you would spurn your dark lady? Perhaps you feel a stirring of the truth already. But that will come later. There is a battle yet to be fought. You have done what we feared was impossible. You have released me from a century of sorrow. Your power is great. So too must be your weapon. You must choose what you will wield. And the Moon Maiden will provide. Thus I have said, thus will it be so. Are you ready? 
We're going to kill Ketherick Thorn. Freed from her chains, Aelin took flight, racing towards Moonrise Towers to enact her vengeance upon Ketherick Thorn. Back in the Shadowfell, a foreboding silence weighed heavily on Shadowheart's conscience. We need to leave. Lady Shah won't stand for us to be here, not after what we did. She must be angry. Yet, I don't feel it. Or hear it. There's only silence. Let's get out of here, please. Whatever's coming, I don't want to be in the heart of the Shadowfell when it finds me. The Night Song will be headed for Moonrise Towers. We'd better get there and see what she's unleashed against Ketherick Thorm. While her companions left the Shadowfell easily enough, Shadowheart was held back to face Shar's wrath. I thought I was done for. I thought perhaps I might have been dead. This, this is all like some sort of terrible dream. But it's real, isn't it? I stood before the night song. I heard Lady Shah's words, and I failed her. Worse than failed her, I defied her, just because of what that Asimar said. I tried to leave, but Shah blocked me, punished me for failing her. I thought I knew the limit of pain that the incurable wound could inflict, but... I had no idea. It felt like I was suffering the agony of a thousand people all at once. My blood was boiling, my hair was on fire. I thought I'd claw my own face off with the pain. But then she released me. Banished me, more like. She said I was an outcast. That all of her children would know me and revile me. Despite the pain and loss, Shadowheart also gained part of herself back, the part that does not blindly obey the will of Shar. You've done more to help me than my faith has in recent times, if I'm honest. Thank you. I thought my faith was the most important thing in my life. I couldn't have been more wrong. She wasn't sure of where this new path would take her, but the next step for both her and her companions was clear. Night Song promised she'd tell me something about myself. I need to speak with her as soon as I can. What she said to me back in the Shadowfell about the wolves, that's no coincidence. She took flight to hunt down Ketherick Thorm. All I can do is help hasten his demise and hope that answers soon follow. With the help of Jahira, her Harpers, and Aelin, the party was able to best Ketherick atop Moonrise Towers. You. What have you done? What have you done to me? Catherick Thorn! Aelin. Rise, you dog. Retribution has come, and her sword is my sword. The gods fight at our side! Beaten but not yet dead, Ketherick fled beneath Moonrise Towers, accompanied by a bound Aelin. My lord beckons me. You must return to your prison, and my daughter must be reclaimed. 
Your daughter? Isabel. The party followed Catherick into the depths, where they uncovered the full extent of their enemy's plot. The so-called Absolute God was really an Elderbrain, serving as a front for the gods of death, Bane, Baal, and Merkel. Harnessing the power of an ancient artifact, the Crown of Karsus, the Chosen of the Dead Three were able to dominate the Elderbrain, bending it to their collective will. The Edict of Bane! The Lash of Baal! The Testament of Merkel! An Elder Brain. One of the cruelest and most powerful creatures in existence, enslaved by mere mortals. Now, the dominated Elder Brain led a murder march on Baldur's Gate, a crisis that would allow the Chosen of the Dead Three to establish absolute control of the city if not the entire continent of Faerun. You're supposed to be the fearsome general come to conquer the city. And I am the hero who will save it. It is time, faithful ones. March on Boulder's Gate. We go to prepare the way. Shadowheart and her companions freed Aelin once more. Together, they battled Catherick in his final form, an avatar of Merkel. Finally defeated, Catherick was forsaken by his god, meeting a savage end beneath Aelin's boot. I am forsaken. You, you have no idea what you've done. Uh, Isabel. The villain is dead! The rats! Together, we have crushed him! Brain and body! Ugh. No! No! We pick our way toward our fates, unleashed! Finally reunited, both Aelin and Isabel joined the party at their camp, where Aelin made good on her promise to Shadowheart. What do you know about me? You spoke of my past, being chased by wolves. I told no one about that. Almost no one. But I certainly didn't share that with you. There is nothing I can tell you that you do not already know yourself. They trained you well, trained you hard. Chiseled away any part of you that did not fit their plan. They made you forget. I chose to do that for the mission to protect Shah's secrets. Yes, yes, that is an old song, girl. Your goddess cares more for her precious secrets than she does her devotees. Get to the point. When you freed me, you severed a bond between me and that dog, Thorm. A bond of pain, his, inflicted on me. When I laid eyes on you, I sensed a similar bond. You, tethered to two others someplace distant. Let me help you remember. Oh. 
What? Who was that man? You already know. Did you not see yourself in him? Do you not recognize your own blood? My father. That was him. That is him. He lives still. And your mother, too. No. It can't be. I'm an orphan. And who told you that? Your adoptive family? You are not to blame. You were young, impressionable. They took you because they wanted to break and remake you. But you are a child no longer. You are a woman. One who knows what must be done. My parents... I need to save them. Your parents are with your abductors. You will need to return to their lair. But be warned. You may have once thought of them as comrades, mentors, friends, even lovers. They will all be enemies now. Along with the revelation, Aelin bestowed upon Shadowheart the Spear of Night, remade in Saluna's image. You have been forewarned for what is to come, but not yet forearmed. I was able to retrieve it before it sank too far into Shah's umbral domain. Shah is quick to discard whatever she has no use for. I think you know that well enough, but I felt it call to me as I took flight. Whatever Shah calls her own, Saluna has equal claim to. They are one and the same. Their power is matched and mirrored. Take it. You will find it useful. What you do with it, that will be up to you. Same as before. I'll need every advantage, it seems. Thank you. A debt repaid. You returned my life unto me. Now go and claim your own. <sighs> it hurts. Shah torments you still. What a spiteful creature she is. This will not stop until you take action. See that your parents' sacrifices are not in vain. Allow the Moon Maiden to guide you at last. Shadowheart knew what she needed to do with her newfound freedom and was fortunate enough to have companions that would help her see it through. I've been lied to. My whole life. And I was gullible enough to just believe it. My parents are alive and I have to save them. I think a part of me always knew that. A part that Shah denied to me. With Ketherick Thorm defeated and balance restored, the Shadow Curse lifted from the lands surrounding Moonrise Towers. It was a good omen for the party of adventurers, with their sights now set on Baldur's Gate. Yet, their travels were not without trouble as the party was waylaid by a group of Githyanki. Entering the Astral Prism to aid the Dream Visitor, they made a shocking discovery. The Dream Visitor was nothing more than an illusion, conjured by an independent Mind Flayer known as the Emperor, whom the party would later come to learn was the founder of Baldur's Gate. Don't let my form deceive you. Uh, I am the one that's been protecting you. I am the one that came to you in your dreams. Help me. Despite his appearance, the Emperor had been protecting the party, so they aided him and fought off the Githyanki. The party also learned the true nature of the Astral Prism. It was a prison designed by the false Githyanki god, Queen Vlacketh, to contain Prince Orpheus, a Githyanki with the power to resist the Elder Brain's authority. Prince Orpheus, son of the first leader of the Githyanki. His power has been the source of your continued protection against the voice of the Absolute, the power to disrupt hive mind communication. It is the same power that enabled Orpheus's mother to bring about the fall of the Illithid Empire eons ago. A power she passed on to him and that I leveraged for 
When Orpheus's mother left, a usurper took her place. Blacketh declared herself queen of the Githyanki. Blacketh wanted his power, but Orpheus rose against her, and so she sealed him and his honor guard within this prison. The Emperor had been siphoning the power to resist the Elder Brain from the imprisoned Githyanki prince and convinced the party that Orpheus needed to remain a prisoner to ensure all of their survival. After surviving the night, the party continued venturing forth towards Baldur's Gate. Along with a change of scenery came a change to Shadowheart's look, her now platinum blonde hair signifying a turning point in her life, away from Shar's darkness and towards the light of the Moon Maiden. In Rivington, one of Baldur's Gate's outer city districts, Shadowheart was approached by Ferd Droger, one of Shar's followers. Is it true? Has Our Lady forsaken you? I know the truth. I know my parents still live. Tell me where they are and I have no quarrel with you. I'm afraid the quarrel is unavoidable, thanks to you. Now I must report your reappearance. If you are intent on bringing matters to a head, then seek out the House of Grief in the Lower City. Though, if I was you, I'd be very tempted to just forget it all and disappear. You have some form of doing so, after all. With this new information, Shadowheart's next step was clear. She and her companions ventured through the Lower City and stepped through the threshold of the House of Grief. There, Shadowheart was subjected to the Mapping of the Heart by none other than the Mother Superior. That voice. Allow me. I think I'm supposed to do this. Do you know why you are here? There is something I lost. No. Had taken from me. My family. My life. I want it all back. Loss is a gift, girl. Do you still not understand that? Now give me the true answer. What is your purpose in being here? The artifact. I was sent to retrieve it, at any cost. And who tasked you with this mission? The Mother Superior of Sha- It's you. Give me the honor of my name, in full. I... I can't. My memories... I know what's in that head of yours better than you do, girl. My name. Mother Superior. Viconia Devere. You still have the wits to recognize your betters. Good. Viconia Devere was an old acquaintance of Jahira and Minsk, and both had their own thoughts to share. Viconia Devere. If only Shar would bless me with the forgetting of your face. You. Who would have recognized your foul scent, if not for all this evil Sharon incense? Always a pleasure to see old acquaintances, but you would be wise to not interfere in what is to come. Now descend. You have much to answer for. Oh, a projection. Let us find her in the flesh then, so I can give her a hug. Following the mapping, Shadowheart descended into the Sharon Cloister. Viconia had hoped to make an example of Shadowheart, but the recently turned cleric had other plans. They already heard how you disgraced yourself before Lady Shah, how she marked you as the enemy. But it is quite another thing for them to see it for themselves. I am very glad you decided to return. A cautionary tale such as yours will be studied by Lady Shah's initiates for years to come. But perhaps I can make a case for some small measure of mercy. Give me the artifact, and I can at least make this quick. Enough. I don't answer to you. Not anymore. I'm here for my family. That's right. I know what you did, and it's not going to be quick. 
Viconia also reveals why she sent Shadowheart to retrieve the artifact, now known as the Astral Prism. Whispers reached my ears from all corners. Potential rivals of Lady Shah, all vying for the same prize. A new god, amassing the disaffected, the outcasts. Those who should turn to us. This absolute is but an upstart, disturbing the natural order and threatening to impede the glorious return of Lady Shah's pure, endless darkness. I had to act. I had to strangle that foul conspiracy while it was still in the cradle. We learned all we could. The artifact was the one thing the Absolutists feared. The one thing they desperately wanted to keep out of their enemy's grasp. I had to have it. Lady Shah's concerns lie elsewhere. With another. But she is a goddess. She can afford to ignore that which does not threaten her. I must keep her faith alive in mortal hearts. I must defend her ways, lead her children, stop all threats. Even if I must go against her wishes, I will prove myself her most loyal servant. Shah doesn't care. She was always going to use you and discard you. But now I'm going to deal with you first. Inevitably, a difficult battle followed in which Shadowheart fought alongside her companions, striking down Viconia Devere and any others that might stop her. Beaten but not dead, Viconia still sought to gain a small victory, revealing the painful circumstances surrounding the imprisonment of Shadowheart's parents. My parents. Where are they? So blunt. Have you forgotten all the interrogation techniques I taught you? Where is the finesse? Answer me! They are right through that door in the Chamber of Loss. Where they have been all along. You saw them many times, only we made you forget. But they didn't forget. They watched as we molded you. They watched. They wept. They bled. Often at your hand. It may not be a happy reunion, but it will be a memorable one. Why? Why me? Why all this effort? Lady Shah commanded me, and I obeyed. I do not question. I merely act as she wills me to. I had an enclave in Waterdeep, you know. Much grander than this. Shah ordered me to raise it kill all who followed me, claim they betrayed me, when in fact I slew those who showed nothing but loyalty. Shah had me do that, and I did, to cover my tracks, to usher in you. In the end, Viconia was simply acting out the will of her god, Shar. She never questioned her orders and now raged at Shadowheart's defiance. What are you talking about? You became my mission. To take a child of Salunas and turn her over to Lady Shah. To show that all light fades and darkness will prevail in the end. All this was to make you into what the Dark Lady needed you to be. The planning. The training. Those deaths in Waterdeep. It was all to groom you to replace me at her right-hand side. And still you threw it away! Ultimately, Shadowheart was always meant to be an example. Her tragic origin, the result of a petty quarrel between two diametrically opposed gods. Rather than giving into emotions, Shadowheart left Viconia's fate to the adventurer she had grown to trust. I want to see my parents. And I don't care what happens to this one. She's been in my head long enough already. Do what you like. I know you'll choose well. What are you doing? Come back and finish this yourself. You owe me that. Let go, mother. Embrace loss. Both Jahira and Minsk had their own thoughts on what should happen to Viconia. She stands at the same crossroads you yourself once did, Viconia. 
but it seems you are not quite the teacher you thought. Boo thinks you have had every chance to change your ways. Count yourself blessed it is not he who judges you today. And in the end, the adventurer agreed with Minsk. I draw near, my lady. <sighs> Just as Viconia promised, Shadowheart found her parents bound within the Chamber of Loss. Gods, what's been done to them? It can't be. Another vile trick. <laughs> No, there is no trick. It's her, Jennifer, Jan, our little girl. Moon Maiden's Grace, it is you. I'm here to get you out of here. They're all gone. It's over. Is not over. You see, it matters not if you raise this place, if you slay every one of your brothers and sisters. That was never where my power resided. Every time you try to step away from me, every time you try to reach for Saluna, my hold on you bites deeper. If you had learned, if you had obeyed, there would be no pain, but you struggle on. You will make things worse for yourself and for them. Enough! I'm taking my parents away from here. I'm taking them away from you! You cannot. We are still bound to you. You cannot both free us and free yourself from her curse. The Moon Maiden needs you more than she needs us. You are the future. You must return to the Fold. We are the past. And our duty is almost done. Eloquently put. His mind stood up well to his time here. The same cannot be said for your mother. Such brief, fragile lives humans lead. This is my final lesson. I leave you now to dwell on your mistakes and make your choice. I'm sorry. I didn't know any of this was happening until it was much too late. I came to try to put things right. And you did. You found us. All these years, that dream kept us going that you would break free. No matter what they made you do to us, we knew you were still in there. I knew the Dark Woods wouldn't frighten you. You were always such a brave girl. She was, and still is. You've saved us. Now save yourself. You'll be out of Shah's reach, and we'll be at peace. I only just found you again after all this time. I can't lose you again. We'll still be with you. By the Moon Maiden's grace, we'll never be far. Please, Jennifer. Once again, Shadowheart found herself at a crossroads, two paths before her. Down the first, she would grant her parents a merciful death, freeing both them and herself from Shar's cursed influence. Is this truly what you want? It is what we need, all of us. You were meant to be a guiding light for Saluna's faithful, but they robbed you from us. Now that can be righted, and we can rest. Help us, Jen. I can let go. Now I've seen your face again. Goodbye. Not goodbye. 
not even close. bring Saluna's light to dark places and offer guidance to those in need. My parents are watching over me. Under Saluna's moonlight, Shadowheart would grieve for her parents and all that was taken from her. I had my family a moment. Now they're gone. By my hand. They can't comfort me. They can't give me advice. They can't tell me what I was like as a little girl. long time since I've shed a tear. I don't even know how long. Even if they defeated the Elder Brain and saved Baldur's Gate, a part of Shadowheart would always regret the choice that she made. Last night was perfect. Though I couldn't help lying there thinking about my parents before you stirred. I gave them the release they asked for freed myself from Shah's grasp just as they wished for. But there's moments where I think I'd trade that to be able to see them again, talk to them again. There's so much only they could have told me. Instead, Shadowheart chose the other path, to suffer the curse so that she could spend what time remained with her parents. I didn't come this far just to give up at the final hurdle. We're leaving this place together. I'm going to take care of you. Our time has passed, Genevelle. You must not let us burden you. You're no burden. You're my strength. I think I know where my willful side comes from now. But... Hush, Arnel. Jen wants her family. Jen shall have her family. How can we help, dear? Get out of this place as soon as your strength allows. There's a camp. You'll be safe there. Before leaving, Shadowheart was able to find an old friend, one that remained a friend despite Shadowheart's new allegiance to Saluna. Shah condemned me. By her decree, you and I are enemies. Only if you wish us to be. You may not remember, but we shared a lot together once. Good times. Hard times. I will not turn on you, even if it angers Lady Shah. That's... good enough for me. I'm not sure what I expected coming back to this place. Certainly not a friend. In addition, Shadowheart rediscovered her old sanctuary within the cloister, and with it, some closure on this chapter of her life. They seem so familiar. That night, Shadowheart reconciled with her parents and set the foundation for a new life. Doesn't look like anyone's been here in a while. 
Perhaps people lost faith. Or forgot about it. I wanted to come here. To see if I felt anything that I hadn't done before. Now that I know what I know. Now that I know who I am. For so long I only felt what she wanted me to. Now I have to do it for myself and I feel like I'm drowning. So much time's been lost already. Most of it I can't even remember. What I do remember... It would have been so much easier to just become a monster. I have my family back. And now I can't even look them in the eye. I don't deserve to be anyone's daughter. That's not true. Not even close. I'm sorry. You shouldn't have to see me like this. Alive. Free. Feeling. I've dreamt for years of seeing you like this. Seeing you as yourself again, Jen. It kept us going all this time. I can't be your Jennifer. Not as you remember her. Of course you can. No. I'd be turning my back on too much. Shadowheart is as much part of who I am as Jennifer. I can't just forget her. <laughs> That's not what I do anymore. Besides, Shadowheart still suits me. Even better than before, perhaps. I can't cast a shadow without some light. Don't worry. I'm still your daughter. If you want me to be. I'll call you whatever you like, so long as you're happy. Arnel? The Moon Maiden guides and helps us find our true selves. Shadowheart. Daughter. With her parents alive, Shadowheart was finally given the full truth of what happened on that fateful night in the woods all those years ago. You were to come of age that night, left alone in the woods and using only Saluna's guidance to find your way back to us. But you were not alone in the woods. We caught a Sharon spy near our village and learned that his accomplices sought to abduct you. I had to find you, to bring you home, and I had to do it quickly. In my haste, I made a terrible mistake. I took on my wolf form to cover the ground more quickly, and it worked. I followed your scent and reached you before the Sharons could. But when I found you, you did not see your father rushing to save you. You only saw a wolf hunting you in the darkness. I should have told you of my curse before that night. And then everything would have been different. You panicked, and before I could explain, the Sharons found us, father and daughter, wolf and prey. They took us both. When I awakened, you were gone, but your mother was with me. They were spiriting us away to the city, hidden and bound. That should have been the day you came of age and into the Moon Maiden's teachings. Instead, the Sharons used us to teach you different lessons. Painful lessons. Shadowheart also learned the full extent of what her parents, and she herself, endured over the many years that followed, as well as the coercive nature of her mysterious wound. They had you use us for practice. All the techniques that the Sharans hold pride in. Trickery, interrogation, torture. They even had you, our own daughter, try to convert us. The worst part was not anything you did to us, it is what they had done to you. You didn't recognize us. Those eyes I'd wiped tears from now looked at me like a stranger. 
They mocked you before our eyes. They said it would discipline you for straying while extending our torment also. Not just with the pain, but with the knowledge that every time we felt it, your true self was being punished for trying to break through their indoctrination. In spite of that, Shadowheart's spirits remained lifted, as she now foresaw a future in which she had her parents. I've heard enough about this absolute threat to understand it cannot be ignored. Your mother and I can wait until you prevail, and I know you will. Beyond that, your mother will need my care, and yours too, if you wish to join us. Somewhere quiet, close to nature, where the sun can warm us, and the moon can watch over us as we sleep. To get to that future, one final hurdle remained. Through their combined will and strength, the party of adventurers retrieved the remaining netherstones from Orin and Gortash. They stole the Orphic Hammer from the House of Hope and used it to free Prince Orpheus from the Astral Prism. Orpheus was the only being with the power to subdue the Elder Brain which had since been suffused with Netherese magic so as to become a much greater foe, the Netherbrain. The new alliance with Orpheus, however, came at a cost, as the Emperor saw the Prince's liberation as a betrayal. He left the party, siding with the Netherbrain instead. Very well. Since you will not work with me, you work against me. You leave me no option but to join with the nether brain. Following this, Orpheus made the ultimate sacrifice, becoming a mind flayer so that he could properly channel the nether stones to dominate the nether brain. I will sacrifice my soul for my people. I will end the grand design. I knew it was my destiny to save my people. I could never have imagined this would be the way. All to wield these. Let us seek out the nether brain and finish this. The party also gained the help of their many allies, which included both Isabel and Aelin, thanks to Shadowheart's choices. The Moon Maiden's silver light is a shield in dark times. Today, it is mine to wield, and I hold her sword. Altogether, the party fought their way to the Netherbrain within the Upper City, where they faced off with the now-turned-Emperor. With all enemies defeated, Orpheus was free to channel the Nether Stones and dominate the Nether Brain. There, at last, it is subdued, and thus I honor my mother's legacy. The grand design, once again, ended by my line. My master, I must obey. I must end! He commanded it to die, and along with it, the tadpoles that had been plaguing the adventurers were finally destroyed.
Weakened by the Netherbrain's death, the remaining Mind Flayers in Baldur's Gate were no match for its brave denizens, and were swiftly cut down. Following their triumphant victory and celebrations, Shadowheart reflected on her life as it stood, the choices leading up to it, and her path going forward. I was afraid for the briefest moment when I woke this morning. I didn't know where I was. I thought perhaps it had all been a dream, stopping the absolute, saving my parents. Then I realized I was in your arms. We did it. Everything's perfect. Almost, anyway. After everything that happened, with my parents, with Shah. I didn't think I was owed any happiness. I did things. Things that fill me with shame now. There's at least one person who doesn't want me happy. Shah. I felt the wound last night. While you were sleeping. Like some sadistic child de-winging a fly. She can try to twist the knife all she likes. I know I can survive her worst. Nothing she does can sour the fact that I have my family again. I'm hoping to find some place I can settle down and stay close to my parents. Somewhere quiet, where they can find peace and gaze at the night sky. If that sounds at all appealing, then I'll keep a spot for you. It'll be just like old times. Thank you all for watching. These story style videos take a lot of time and effort, but I really like how it turned out, and I hope you did too. Let me know if there are other stories from Baldur's Gate 3 you would like to see covered, or perhaps some aspects of Shadowheart's story you thought warranted further discussion. If you want to see more great content, you can head over to my channel, and if you're new, consider subscribing. You're helping me feed my cat, her name's Marshmallow. Have a great day, if you're here today, have a great Friday, and a great weekend, and as always, Thanks for watching.